Speed Reading The eternal hope for intellectuals and everyone else to be able to read a single book in a very short time is unfortunately being manipulated very well by numerous organizations, often with ill intent. I will not name names, but if you are one, please expose yourself down in the comment section. The commonly said tactics like photo reading do seem very attractive, proven by the insane amount of price being offered and the number of people who fall for it. However, I have to warn as many people as possible that speed reading is fake as funk and is in no way worth tens of thousands of your dollars. Welcome to Life Study Library, where I, Lai Yosh, will talk about these interesting and educational information about science and psychology that can greatly change your life for the better by using actual scientific and psychological studies. If this seems interesting to you, please do me a great favor by simply liking this video, subscribing to Life Study Library, and sharing this channel to your friends to spread the word. I am aware and genuine, unlike those speed reading promoting organizations, that not all my content is undeniably true, but because it's based on actual scientific data, it's applicable to the greatest amount of the population, and therefore it's the most likely source that can apply to you as an individual. But enough about that, let's talk about today's topic. Supporting my argument can be seen from many studies like the one done in 2016 at University of California claiming that speed reading, in its traditional definition, is merely skimming the material. This one is a review article and it says that in most speed reading practices, you are simply training your eye movement and peripheral vision to read the words on the book in a faster time. However, this practice misses the point from the very get-go. Firstly, within the entire time it takes you to read stuff, your eye movement only contributes to about 10% of that effort. How fast you can move your eyes to read words is very insignificant. Secondly, the majority of people will have to read the same material multiple times to fully understand it. So reading words in a fast-paced movement breaks the whole point of deciphering a written material. One interesting part of the paper showed an example of a speed-reading champion that supposedly read the latest Harry Potter book at the time in just around 47 minutes. And you should check out the book review written by the person after they finished the book. You'll see why I'm laughing right now. I promise you, it's truly funny. But yes, uh, let's get back to the video. According to the researcher of the review article, there is no scientific evidence that proves the legitimacy of speed reading training at this moment. This is because even if you finish a book in a faster time, that doesn't mean you've understood the material as well as those who read in a slower pace. Speed reading is nothing more than skimming. The researchers have also said that those who are able to read a book at a faster pace are ones who already possess a vast knowledge of the material. It's no surprise that a professional chemist will know more about chemistry and its associated terms and concepts compared to the average person. So when they read a chemistry textbook, the expert will of course read it at a faster pace than regular people who do not possess a great amount of knowledge of the material. Additionally, due to the pre-possessed knowledge, the expert will be able to skim over some parts of the book they already know by heart and still have a very high quality understanding of it. Therefore, for most people, the act of skimming and many aspects of speed reading is a trade-off against understanding the material. So when reading a book or an article, whatever, skimming is the greatest method to physically go through the reading faster, but to fully understand what's being said in the text, you first need to read other books of the same topic, and a lot of them, to even get to a moderate amount of expertness. And thus, you'll be spending a great amount of time on other books, so speed reading, in the end, will not be a time-efficient technique. American economist and columnist Tyler Cohen has also said that to be able to read a book faster, you have to already be an expert in that subject. And if you're not, then reading a book in a faster time is only equivalent to not reading at all. In hindsight, this seems super obvious, but the point is that you can't cheat your way through becoming knowledgeable or experienced. I too read a lot of books, particularly about science and psychology, and as a reader, I have to admit, I cannot fully comprehend 100% of the book I read in my first try. Reading the same book multiple times will let me become more knowledgeable about that particular topic within the book, but that's in no way a proof of me becoming knowledgeable of, say, the entirety of psychology. 
I may become able to read that exact book faster with each additional tries, but that is not equivalent of me becoming able to read other books of different topics with the same amount of time spent and the understanding I get from those books. Today's recommended book is The Long Game, How to Be a Long-Term Thinker in a Short-Term World by Dory Clark. I bought this book for about $15, but I still get it if it was $15,000. That's how much value this book and its content contains. Like how speed reading became a huge deal, the world is becoming more and more of a short-term game. You have those drink this pill and become fit in 15 days, or learn these three things and become a millionaire, all these advertisements which most of them are fake, yes, but are also focusing on the short-term gains. But unfortunately, many things in life that are actually valuable requires a lot of time to attain. This is the same with information. For example, before the invention of TV, people used to go to the movie theater to watch news and other digital entertainment, and people spent like multiple hours to gain these info. Then, home television entered and was actually ridiculed by people who said things like, there's no way you can get valuable information or enjoyment out of a 30 to 40 minute program. Time passed and nobody's watching the news at the theater. Then, YouTube and other social media appeared, and people reacted the same way, saying that a 5 to 15 or so minute videos made by amateurs cannot possibly be of any value. But again, time passed, and more and more people are moving towards YouTube. And now, we have YouTube Shorts or TikTok, and it's being ridiculed yet again. Many YouTubers to this day reject Shorts or TikTok because they're too short and cannot be a good business and you know exactly what's been happening. The point is that humanity is leaning more and more towards getting the answer or resources in a shorter amount of time. This is a problem because easily attainable answers and resources are mostly not worth that much because they are easily attainable, meaning that everyone has it, and you cannot stand out from the crowd with things that everyone has. The more of a short-term thinker you become, the harder it is for you to win in the long game called life. And that's what this book will teach you. I think this is the most influential book I've ever read. So I mean this time. You should definitely read this. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. I'll see you in another video. Ciao!